Welcome to LoadRunner 9. This version of LoadRunner includes an enhanced scenario scheduler. Using the new scheduler, you can emulate load behavior patterns that simulate real-life application behavior. For example, you can schedule 20 virtual users, or vUsers, to use an application during a given 10-minute time period. After 10 minutes, you can start running another 30 vUsers, have all the vUsers run together for 20 minutes, and then schedule them to stop running. The new scheduler controls these kinds of patterns by controlling how many vUsers to run and their load patterns. When you define a schedule for your load test, you can define how many vUsers to run at a time and the rate at which to load them. This is an enhancement to previous versions of the scheduler where you could define only the rate at which to load the selected vUsers. Let's schedule a new scenario using the new scheduler. We'll open the scheduler and create a manual scenario that will represent the pattern in the example we just mentioned. In the New Scenario dialog box, let's create a manual scenario and select the Flight Demo script. The scenario is displayed in the Design view. Note the new layout of this view. The Scenario Groups pane in the upper left corner lists the groups that will participate in our scenario. In contrast to previous versions, the user quantity for each group is no longer defined in the quantity column of this table, but rather in the scheduler itself as we will see shortly. Below the Scenario Groups pane is the scheduler area, which is divided into two sections, the Actions Grid and the Interactive Schedule Graph. The Actions Grid contains the default scenario schedule. We will redefine this schedule shortly. The Schedule Graph is a graphical display of the schedule actions defined in the Actions Grid. The graph is interactive in that you can use the graph itself to configure the schedule settings. Another new feature of LoadRunner 9 is the ability to define service level agreement criteria for your load test. These service level agreements, or SLAs, can be defined in the service level agreement pane in the upper right corner of the design view. They can be defined here prior to running the load test, or you can define them in analysis after running the load test. You can learn more about the SLA feature in the service level agreement demo that is available on the README page. Let's continue with configuring our manual scenario. We will now define the load pattern for the vUser group that we selected for the scenario. There are two types of scenario schedules. We can schedule our scenario by vUser group, that is, each vUser group will run on its own defined schedule, or we can create one schedule for the whole scenario. Let's create one schedule for the whole scenario. We also need to select a mode for running our scenario, real life or until complete. A scenario that runs in real-life mode runs according to a set of actions that emulate real-life load behavior. That is, we can define how many vUsers to run, how often to start running them, and when to stop running them. We can also run more vUsers at any point during the scenario. Running a scenario until complete runs the participating vUser groups according to the number of iterations in their runtime settings and when all the users have finished running their defined courses, the scenario ends. To emulate the behavior that we described earlier, let's choose the real-life schedule mode. Now we define the load behavior of the vUsers. Let's start with running 20 vUsers for a duration of 10 minutes. We can use the default schedule actions as a basis for our schedule and then edit the existing actions. Double-click the Start vUsers action in the Actions grid. In the Edit Action dialog box, change the vUser quantity to 20. Let's also schedule 5 vUsers to run every 15 seconds. Click the Apply button to save the changes. Notice how the changes we just made are reflected in the Schedule graph. Next, we'll edit the period that the vUsers are to run. Click the Next button and set the vUsers to run for 10 minutes. 
Click the Apply button to save the changes. At this stage, we have a basic schedule that will run 20 V users for a steady duration of 10 minutes and then stops them at the end. Just as we modified the rate at which to start the V users, we can modify the rate at which to stop them. Note that the quantity of vUsers that we defined in the Start vUsers action is displayed in the Scenario Groups Quantity column. Now let's make the scenario more interesting. Let's change the scenario so that after the 20 vUsers have run for 10 minutes, 30 more vUsers join the scenario all at the same time. This means that we'll have 50 vUsers running in total. We'll let them run for 20 minutes, and then have them gradually stop. Let's start by adding the additional 30 V users. In the Actions grid, we select the Duration action and click the Add Action After button. In the Add Action dialog box that opens, we select Start V users, set 30 V users to start running simultaneously, and apply the action to the schedule. Note the peak displayed in the graph. Now we'll add one more action that will run all 50 V users together for a duration of 20 minutes. We click the Add Another Action button, select the Duration Action Type, and set the V users to run for 20 minutes. Let's look at the schedule graph. When the scenario is started, the scheduler will gradually start running 20 V users. Ten minutes later, 30 more V users will start running simultaneously, such that 50 V users will be running all together. These V users will run for 20 minutes, after which they will all gradually stop running. Note how when we click on an action in the graph, the corresponding action in the grid is highlighted and vice versa. You can maximize the graph window by clicking the Open Full View button on the Graph Toolbar. To edit the schedule from the graph, click the Edit Mode button. In this mode, you can add and delete actions and edit existing actions from the graph. Let's assume we would like our first loading phase to take exactly four minutes. We can edit the Start V Users action by selecting the line representing the action in the graph and dragging the diamond-shaped endpoint to the 4-minute mark. To attain more accurate values, we can do this using the arrow keys on the keyboard. Now let's say that instead of adding 30 more V users, we decide we want to add 40 more V users. We select the line representing the second Start V users action and drag the endpoint up to the 60 V users mark. These 60 V users include the initial 20 V users and the additional 40 V users that we just added. This demonstration has shown you how to use LoadRunner's new scheduler feature to create a more true to life schedule for your scenario. To learn more about this feature, see the HP LoadRunner Controller User's Guide.